JP Morgan Chase is one of the four biggest banks in the US and currently ranks as the second biggest issuer of credit cards in the US after Citibank. But the story of this iconic company starts 200 years ago with this guy who literally looks like he belongs in a board game about capitalism. JP Morgan was born in 1837 in Connecticut and had a good start in life. His father was also a successful businessman and became a partner in the banking firm George Peabody & Co, moving the family to London. At this time, JP was sent to school in Switzerland, where he learned French, and to Göttingen University in Germany. He returned to the US after attending university and started work in New York as a clerk at the American branch of his father's company. But JP proved he had good business sense. Some of his early deals include using company funds to buy a load of coffee straight from a ship captain in New Orleans and selling it to merchants at a profit. Or during the Civil War, financing the purchase of surplus rifles from the government for $3.50 each and selling them back to the Union Army for $22 each. That one turned into a scandal, actually. But anyway, during the mid to late 1800s, Morgan partnered with various businessmen. He financed the formation of the United States Steel Corporation, arranged the merger that formed General Electric, and like American Express and Wells Fargo, Morgan was involved with the railroads. It was the business to be in at the time. Morgan even bailed out the US economy on two occasions, which led to criticism at how powerful private business had become. After the death of his business partner Anthony Drexel in 1895, JP renamed his company JP Morgan & Co with a focus on banking. JP died in 1913 and as an indication of how powerful and respected he had become, the New York Stock Exchange actually remained closed until noon on the day of his funeral. But the company continued without him and in 1914 built their headquarters at 23 Wall Street, often known simply as The Corner. It was regarded as the most important address in American finance. This wasn't always a good thing, however. On September 16, 1920, a bomb went off outside 23 Wall Street, killing 38 people and injuring 400. A warning note was found nearby stating, Remember we will not tolerate any longer. Free the political prisoners or it will be sure death for all of you. American anarchists fighters. The FBI never found the culprit. The file on the case was closed in 1940. During World War I, JP Morgan was the sole underwriter of war bonds to Great Britain and France, loaning the equivalent of $35 billion in today's money. In the 30s, JP Morgan Co. span off its investment banking operations, forming the new company, Morgan Stanley, which established its offices at No. 2 Wall Street. JP Morgan continued to operate as a commercial bank and in the 80s began to get back into the investment banking sphere. While JP Morgan was developing its business over the last 200 years, so was Chase. The original Chase National Bank was founded in 1877, named after this guy, Salmon P. Chase, a US Treasury Secretary who had no connection with the bank. In the 1930s, it bought out Equitable Trust Company of New York and for some time was the biggest bank in the world. Chase National Bank was also one of the first tenants of Rockefeller Center, and David Rockefeller later worked for Chase and then became the CEO of its successor company until 1981. In 1955, Chase National Bank merged with the Manhattan Company, a company that had been around since 1799 and originally specialized in providing clean water to Lower Manhattan, but quickly entered the banking industry. In 1958, Chase Manhattan Bank was the first New York bank to issue a credit card. The original card could be used at 6,000 local stores. Chase's current logo was originally designed for Chase Manhattan Bank by Chermayef and Geismar in 1961 an abstract symbol based on the design of primitive water pipes constructed by the Manhattan Company in its early days. The pipes were literally tree trunks hollowed out and held in place by four pieces of wood arranged around them. The designers describe it as radical for its time, since few companies in the 60s used abstract symbols as logos. The company continues to use the logo today. In 1996, Chase Manhattan Bank merged with Chemical Banking Corporation, the bank behind the first ATM in the United States. The merger with JP Morgan happened in the year 2000 and was one of the largest banking mergers in history. The combined company renamed itself JP Morgan Chase. During the financial crisis of 2008 and 9, JP Morgan Chase took over troubled investment bank and brokerage Bear Stearns and Washington Mutual, which was the largest savings and loan association in the United States until it filed for bankruptcy in 2008. WAMU's branches and ATMs were rebranded as Chase, increasing the company's reach. 
Today, JP Morgan Chase manages over $2.7 trillion in assets. Its hedge fund unit is the second biggest in the US, and it has one of the most popular portfolios of credit cards in the United States. The legacy of the Morgan family is an international one. With Morgan Stanley still existing in the US, JP's father's company was renamed Morgan Grenfell & Co and existed as a London-based investment bank until 1990 when it was acquired by Deutsche Bank. Guys, if you like this documentary style content, please give this video a like and share it with your friends. It takes longer to make, so we'd really appreciate you helping us promote it. And lastly, do you have a Chase credit card? If you do, you probably need something to put it in. So if you are in the market for a new wallet, our Credit Shifu wallet store is currently fully stocked. Check it out by clicking the link below. Please subscribe if you are new, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.